Alright guys, how you guys doing? I wasn't really going to make this video, but seeing as a lot of people have requested on both Twitter and mainly YouTube as to which MacBook Air to get, why, why did I get my 13 inch MacBook Air, uh, and there's a lot of you who are just jumping onto the Mac OS X kind of bandwagon and you want to kind of get some information or some helpful tips, hopefully from someone who's been on the Mac side and who's bought you know, quite a lot of Apple hardware per se. And I'm just going to kind of run down and give you my opinion as to which the best option is. Hopefully it applies to you as well. Now, there's four MacBook Airs. There's two 11-inch models and there's two 13-inch models. The one I have behind me is the low-end 13-inch. Now, 13-inch was a must for me. Number one was the size and, you know, she wanted a bigger size. That's what she's kind of always wanted. Uh, but other than size, the 13-inch models have a built-in SD card reader, which is a must for my needs. It might not be for you, but it is for me. I do a lot of photo and video work. Uh, and it just saves the hassle, uh, you know, carrying around a separate SD card reader through USB. And because the MacBook Airs only have two USB ports, uh, mine are kind of always occupied. I've usually got a webcam in there or I've got a Yeti uh, microphone in there as well. So I don't really want to be taking them out, putting an SD card reader, when I can just have an integrated SD card uh, approach. Uh, and to be honest, the weight, there's not much difference. If you're going to be really, really portable, then of course the 11 inch is, um, you know, something to consider. But for me, uh, I find the 13 inch already too bloody light. Uh, but as I said, the size and the SD card reader were a must for me. Now going back onto the 11 inch, the low end one, in my opinion, is not a good buy for a couple of reasons. Number one, two gigs of RAM. Um, I don't think that's enough. Uh, I think four should be the bare minimum to today's standards. Um, while you've got flash storage in there, which is going to help you open up those applications faster, load up OS X faster, two gigabytes is really not enough. Secondly, it's only got 64 gigabytes of storage, which again is not enough, especially if you plan to install Windows on it and a lot of applications and your documents. You're going to constantly find out that once you're reaching that limit, you're going to get a pop-up saying, delete some stuff, clean your system up because you're going to that 64 gigabyte barrier. If you're spending that much on a MacBook Air anyway, why not spend you know, or save up for another £100 or so and just get the next uh, version up? which is the high-end 11-inch, which I think is a fantastic buy. It's 4 gigabytes is standard, you can customise it, so you can get a better processor if you don't want a 1.6, you can get a 1.8 for £150 more, so it depends on your needs, how much work you're going to do, how much work you're going to be doing. If your MacBook Air, you know, you rely on it to kind of generate income, uh, video work, photo work, so that £150 is really going to pay off for itself in any case. And of course the high-end 11 inch also has 128 GB of storage which I think is quite good. It's going to, you know, it's not going to cause a problem. Moving on to the 13 inch, you've got an SD card reader, you've got a bigger screen, you've got a slightly better processor than the standard uh, 11 inch processors. You've got 1.7 instead of 1.6 and um, but you can't customize the low-end 13 inch you can't do it. If you want to kind of put more storage inside it or a better processor, you have to look at the high-end uh, MacBook Air, which you're going to be paying roughly about 250 or 300 pound more, which will give you just uh, double the storage. And if you want to up the processor, you're going to have to pay 100 pound more. So I don't think really the high-end one is worth it. Here in the UK anyway, um, I don't think, you know, you're... I would rather go for the low end 13 inch like I've done and then just buy external storage, especially now that the MacBook Airs have got Thunderbolt technology. Hopefully we'll be seeing Thunderbolt enabled devices pretty soon since it's been out since February of this year. So meaning high rate transfers, so you can essentially just buy a, th a, a Thunderbolt hard drive and then you know, that way you can switch your files, copy programs, films, movies, music, TV episodes, TV series, or whatever it is, instead of using USB, which you could still do, uh, but since it's got Thunderbolt, uh, and whenever that you will see them on the market, you can just buy a Thunderbolt enabled hard disks. 
In terms of storage, it really depends on how much work you are going to be doing. If you're going to be using your MacBook Air as a primary machine and you're going to be constantly on the road uh, visiting clients, offers here and there, you might want to, you know, get the high-end one to, you know, kind of go away from any hassle such as storage problems. You might just want to, you know, spend that £250. But the average Joe, I think, will be perfectly fine with the low-end 13 or the high-end 11-inch, I think. To me, when I look at the MacBook Air lineup, the two systems that really, you know, come straight to my face, which I would say, yeah, I could buy these two any day of the week, would be the high-end 11 and the low-end 13-inch MacBook Airs. I've already done some speed tests. If you haven't seen it, click on the screen. Uh, I've been really impressed with the speed performance. If you're going to be using, getting a MacBook Air to play games, you sort are looking at the wrong machine because this is not, you're not re really going to be expecting to play high end games. I've tried Battlefield Bad Company 2. While it works, uh, there is lag. Uh, Black Ops multiplayer, I have tried it. You know, partly the blame lies on the actual servers and the hardware. Modern Warfare 2 ran perfectly fine on multiplayer. Again, if you haven't seen those videos, you know, they're on the screen. No matter which MacBook Air you get, you've got standard graphics card, you know, all the way across the board. So you can't, you know, up the graphics or get a better graphics card. If you're really going to be doing uh, gaming, look at an iMac or a MacBook Pro. You should be sorted with that better processor, uh, you know, dedicated graphics card. And because, you know, although these have better processors, the new MacBook Airs, that is, they are got low voltage or low power, so you're not going to see the same performance as you would perhaps on a MacBook Pro or an iMac, simply because they've been dimmed down because of the thinness of this beast as well. You know, it's quite thin, so you do expect it to um, have less uh, powerage. So guys, just before I go, if you're looking to get your first Mac, I've made a video on the cheapest way of getting your Mac. Go to that video, it's on the screen, and that'll give you a guide as to what the best way is and how the cheapest way to get a Mac is. And just before I go, I want to ask you a question, if you can leave it in the comments below, or if you make a video response, that would be even better. Which MacBook Air are you going to be going for? Is it going to be the 13 inch? Or is it going to be none other than the 11 inch MacBook Air, which I happen to have here. This is of course the previous generation, not the new one, and no, this is not mine. But which one are you going to be going for? The 11 inch or the 13 inch? Why are you going for a refurbished one? The refurbished ones, if you can get a great price on them, go for it. Not everyone's a power horse or needs a power horse. Not everyone's editing movies, pictures. If you just want it for the odd web surfing and so on, music, watching movies, You'll be fine with the previous generation of MacBook Airs. Don't waste your money on the new ones. Guys, that's it for this video. If you can check out my new venture, which is iGear.com. Dedicated MacBook Air Pocket. That would be absolutely fantastic. Also, if you want to send me a question, send it through iGlassWegion.com. If you want to see some, some of my other Apple-related videos, everything is on there. My live stream link, my Twitter links, my Facebook links are all on iGlassWegion.com. As always, guys... I will see you guys in our life. Cheers.